Hello everybody and welcome back. Can you believe it's day 29? That is a huge number, day 29, that we've been on our indoor adventure and we've been learning in this very brand new way to stay safe. I am very proud of you and today's message is inspired because I've been seeing on Seesaw and I know you very well. We've known each other a long time. Um, we've been doing an all about me and I noticed that you are putting positive adjectives all about yourself. Nobody is putting describing words about themselves like ugly or mean or useless or smelly or terrible or unwanted. The words that you're using to describe yourself this week are positive attributes. And I think that that is so wonderful that the things that you think about yourself right now are positive. That means you have family who cares about you, you have friends, people who've built you up, people who've said things that you've taken into your heart and that you know that that's who you really are. You are special and individual and wonderful in your own way. But there are moments and they come to all of us where someone out there will say something that makes us doubt ourselves. Like when I was little, people made fun of my hair a lot, a lot, a lot. I know you might think that's crazy. Why would somebody make fun of somebody's hair? Well, sometimes children and adults just don't like things that are different. For whatever reason, they want everything to be the same. But can you imagine that? If we were all exactly the same, what kind of a boring, snoring world that would be? Something about humans wants everything to be the same, but then at the same time, something about humans wants everything to be very special. We are a confusing, confusing, confusing group people are. So I found this book called Donkey Donkey by the one who wrote Petunia. I loved Petunia so much that I had to go buy another vintage book by Roger Duvoisin. Um, I loved his illustrations so much that I went on eBay because you can't even buy this book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or a bookstore. Um, I love his illustrations so much. And then I was reading through and I thought, oh my goodness, what a good book. It was written in 1940. Whoa, that is a very long time ago. So let's do some math. 2000 minus 1940 is 60 years plus 20 more years. This book is 80 years old. Oh my goodness. It is great grandma, grandpa age. And it's called Donkey Donkey. So I'm going to read this story. I'm not going to do a poem today because I have some extra fun things to do with our activity. They take a little longer. Um, so I will read the story. No further ado. Here we go. Donkey Donkey. Another farm animal book. Donkey Donkey by Roger DeVoisin. Donkey Donkey. Donkey Donkey was a nice little donkey. His ears were just long enough. His belly was white and round as a ball. So we're starting out. Donkey Donkey is who he is. He's confident. Donkey Donkey had many very dear friends. Here are some of them. Here are some others. Pit and Pat the horses and Hector the dog also were his friends. Donkey Donkey's master was the kindest man in the village. So, so far we've set up a very happy beginning. Donkey Donkey loves thistles for his dinner and there were a lot of them near the little stream across the meadow. Yet in spite of all that, Donkey Donkey was not happy. One day he was drinking with Pat at the stream He saw Pat's head and his own in the water. He thought Pat was so beautiful with his small ears and he so ridiculous with his long ones that he became very sad and would not eat anymore. So nobody has told him that he's not the same and that he looks strange. Nobody has told him that. He did not get bullied. He looked in the mirror one day and he said, why can't I look like the other animal? And you know why. He's a donkey. He's not a horse. 
Donkey Donkey at last went to see Hector. Hector was very clever. He knew all sorts of tricks. He could tell his right paw from his left paw and so on. Surely his advice would be good. You poor donkey, said Heather, Hector. I know what's wrong with you. With your ears up, you look like a sailboat. Keep your ears down as I do. That's it, donkey. That's it, donkey, donkey. Put them down. Now they look almost as nice as mine. And Pat will be jealous because he can't do that. See how funny I would look with my ears up? And Donkey Donkey was happy again. He went around the farm trotting like a little colt. But poor Donkey Donkey, how his friends laughed when they saw him. Silly Donkey, silly Donkey, said Fuzzy Wuzzy the lamb. Why do you believe that he what Hector says? There's only one way to wear ears. Look at me. Doesn't everyone say I'm pretty? And look at Phoebe the goat. And Fanny the cow. And look at the farmer's brother. Do you see how they all put their ears on the side? So many people cannot be wrong, Donkey Donkey. Donkey Donkey was impressed. He let Fuzzy Fuzzy fix his long ears. Now, said the little lamb, you are beautiful. Wait, let's fetch a mirror. Donkey Donkey agreed that he did look dainty. Naomi the hen said the mirror frame flattered him. But she had a bad disposition, and of course, she would say that. So Donkey Donkey went away again. Happy, again, happy that, although somewhat doubtful, as you can see by his expression. This is the stable door with the scythe hanging on the big nail and Donkey Donkey just about to enter. He entered as usual, but unfortunate for Donkey, the wicked nail met his ear and pierced it painfully. Uh oh. Donkey Donkey was sadder than ever. He cried all night long. It was very unpleasant for his friends. They could not sleep. They were quite angry with him. The next day, Donkey Donkey decided to consult Rosa, the mother pig. She was not known to be very clever. She ate and slept so much. But she was a very honest person. Rosa listened attentively to Donkey Donkey's grievances. Let me think, she said. And she closed her eyes to think more deeply. But pigs have slow minds. Donkey Donkey waited a long time. He counted up to 100, but Rosa was still thinking. I suspect, in fact, that she just went to sleep. At last, at last she opened her eyes and said, Donkey Donkey, I don't know much about making people prettier, but I can give you some practical advice. The idea of wearing ears up and down and sideways is all foolishness. When they're up, the wind and the rain get in them. When they are down, you can't hear. And when they're sideways, well, you know what that, that you know what happens. But if you keep them in front like mine, then you don't need an umbrella. You'll laugh at the sun and the rain, and you can hear well. Ugh, ugh. And Rosa, who had never spoken so much in her life, went to sleep. Donkey Donkey tried it at once. He thought it was really a very good idea. Two days later, there was a lot of wind and rain. Pat caught cold and had the mumps. He had to stay in for a week. He was much ashamed. Donkey Donkey didn't catch cold. He was delighted. Although he felt sorry for Pat, of course. But this is to show the inconvenience of wearing one, one's ears in front and of being unable to see the sun and other things up in the air. Mr. Jones, the farmer, was painting his house. His ladder, being too old, broke. Mr. Jones fell, he fell on Donkey Donkey's head, and they both fell to the ground. And Donkey Donkey was very ill. The doctor was called in, he bandaged his wounds, he pulled his tongue, he felt his pulse, he put him on a scale, he listened to his breathing, 
and then he gave him some bad tasting medicine with a spoon. Whenever you're sick, maybe these things are what happens. And then you get all better. Donkey Donkey's wounds were about were soon healed, but he was still unhappy about his ears. Everything he had tried had failed. And he was as he was brooding over these sad things, Daniel, the little sparrow, perched on the nearby fence, he said, Donkey Donkey, silly donkey, you aren't a dog, you aren't a lamb, you aren't a pig, you are a donkey. Keep your ears up as donkeys do. Twit, twit, twit. And Daniel flew swiftly away. Donkey Donkey was astonished, but he was delighted when a little girl passing by with her father said, Oh, Daddy, see the pretty little donkey? His ears are so beautiful. And from that day, Donkey Donkey kept his ears up. He enjoyed eating thistles again, and he became the happiest of donkeys. And this story is finished. <clears throat> I like many things about this story. I love the illustrations. I love the story itself and how Donkey Donkey was really the one himself who decided that his ears were wrong. This really isn't a bullying story. The other animals told him to change things. They were trying to help him because all they knew was being themselves. Sometimes all we know is being ourselves. So this wasn't actually a bullying story at all. It was about a donkey who didn't have the confidence to be himself until the end. So speaking of confidence, I am taking an art class, an, a children's book writing class. And here are my notes for my class. I take notes while I'm in my class. Today was all about drawing. And there was a teacher. That's a happy toaster with toast popping out. There was a teacher and she was telling us a little bit about drawing figures, drawing faces. And I didn't want to do my homework today. Is that silly or what? Your teacher didn't want to do her homework. But I went outside and I spent just a few minutes, probably about an hour, and I said, Adrian, get it together and make something. And in the end, the best part of making these kids that I made today was the feeling I had when I made something. Uh, the feeling of just creating something and having it be mine, all done mine. So I'm going to do a few faces with you today. If you like drawing, you stay and draw with me. And I'm going to show you the different kinds of strategies that this children's illustrator taught me. So she said with her faces, she always starts with a circle and then she draws two lines through. We haven't done this in class. When we've done figure drawing, we don't do this. So that is the, um, those are the lines to show where the eyes, nose, and mouth go. Nothing goes up here in terms of not eyes, nose, and mouth. So you might think eyes go up here and nose goes in here in the mouth. But on your own face, the eyes are in the center of your face. If you don't believe me, get a ruler and try it out. And then I'm just going to be a seven nose and a regular smile. So I'm going to show you a few different kinds of faces that I learned today. I'm not going to draw a T across all of them. So she taught me some new noses. I almost always make a seven nose. I do an L or a seven nose. That is the one that I pick. But today I was challenged to try some more. So how about nine faces with different noses? Okay, this guy's nose will be that shape. This guy will have that nose. Here's this nose. She called it a pug nose. And a seven nose, a circle nose. And this nose, which I think is very funny. Nostrils are on the front. And this nose and that nose. There are many kinds of noses. So those are the noses that she taught. The lips that she taught were a cupid's bow. This irregular bump, bump, under bump, and like that. You can make a big smile. You can make, oh no, I'm so sad. You can make two lips that don't have a cupid's bow at the top. You can make a smile like that. 
You can make a mouth like that. And another kind of mouth. We'll make this guy's mouth look like that. The eyes can be all different, like we know. I like this kind of eye. Or big eyes. Or tiny eyes. I think this one needs some sleeping eyes. This one needs some eyelash eyes. And I don't mind tiny eyes. And this one needs some almond eyes. And this one will have these kind of eyes. And I love to make all different kinds of hairs. So I think this one's gonna have some curly hairs. They're just speaking to me. You will have spiky hairs. You will have pigtails and a little bit of bangs. You will have that kind of hair with some out of place hairs. And you get to have, hmm, I don't know what you're gonna have yet. You'll have some long hairs and side swept bangs. And you will have some spikies. You're a cool dude. And your brother got some scissors and cut your hair. And this last person has so much hair. I have a lot of hair. I'm Rapunzel. All right, so those are some simple people faces. I would like to see you try some simple people faces today and show me. And then I'll do some more lessons about drawing the bodies with you. I changed my mind about who my favorite is. I think that's my favorite right now. Make some pictures, show me what you do, and I am very proud of you for your at-home adventure. I will see you in just a little bit. I love you.